I grew up in a family that did a lot of gardening, but I had no specific interest in plants per se until college when a friend introduced me to orchids. At first I didn't get it, I thought what was the big deal, it was a purple flower, uh, until I read that they grew on trees. The idea that a plant was growing on another plant just totally mystified me and before long I'd read every book in the library twice and had a hundred plants in my dorm room and uh, that quickly escalated to a part-time job at an orchid nursery and then a full-time job and so on and eventually I end up here at Longwood uh, about three years after that. And Long Gardens has an incredible history uh, with tons of different players in it, primarily obviously Pierre DuPont. Uh, the orchid collection itself begins in the early 1920s when the DuPonts were gifted orchids uh, from a friend of theirs and their love for orchids quickly grew. If you look at the, the manuscripts you can see dozens of orchids being pur purchased over the next 10 or 20 years and uh, they sort of culminated with a gift of about 2,000 orchids from Mrs. Uh, W.K. DuPont, uh, one of Pierre's uh, relatives. So this is the alcove, and what we do in the alcove is we try to keep cool growing or low light orchids in here because it's safer for them. It's a smaller space, and the air that flows in from the Mediterranean garden keeps things cooler. There's all sorts of beautiful things in here. Some oncidiums that smell like chocolate. Above our heads are hanging dendrochylum. These chains of gold, uh, small flowers, and every year's ours get pollinated by fungi gnats because uh, orchids are incredibly good at attracting pollinators no matter where they go, even if they're thousands of miles from their home. So Cattleya used to be the king of the orchid world. Most people know them as corsage orchids. Um, and what's really amazing about our collection is it's so old that most of the plants in it are from the time uh, period when they were being bred as cut flower corsage orchids. Um, so what we do is we segregate them in the cases. So we have white on one side and purple on the other. And so this demonstrates sort of the core of our collection, which is these, at this point, 50 to 60 year old hybrids that were the core of corsage flower breeding. Uh, Cattleyas are amazing flowers. They're big, they're fragrant, they're beautiful, but they only last two to three weeks to a month total. So they give off quite a big bombast, but then they fade quickly. Up here we have vanilla. So most people don't know that vanilla, the flavor you eat, say in your ice cream, is an orchid. And so uh, in South America and in Africa, every day hundreds of workers wake up to pollinate vanilla flowers because the flowers only last for two or three hours in total. So they get up, they pollinate them, then you have to wait six to nine months for the seed pod to mature before you harvest it. And then you have to ferment it in alcohol for another two to five months before you actually get the product that you and I know as the flavor of vanilla. So if you've ever wondered why real vanilla, true vanilla is so expensive, well, that's why. And it's a vining orchid, the entire genus, they're all vines. Uh, on the other side of the room, we have some leafless uh, vanilla also, but this is the species most commonly used in vanilla production. Um, there's tons of information on our website that could prepare you for visiting. Um, I would say most people uh, are here for about three hours. It's a lot of walking. Um, and so if you are coming on a hot day, you want to be sure you're prepared for that. But uh, in reality, give yourself as much um, preparation as you can so that you can spend the time you want to, to see as much as you want to. You know, find a map online and pick the things that you like the best to make sure you get to see them because it's a big place and it is hard to see it in one day. We have lots of people who come back over and over again and still find new things every time.